All right. Engineering 305. <laughs> uh, problem. Chapter 2, problem 36. Uh, steel bar with a buck welded joint, as shown in the figure, will be used to carry an axial tensile load of 400 kilonewtons if the normal and shear stresses on the plane of the butt weld <clears throat> must be limited to 70 megapascals and 45 megapascals, respectively. Determine the minimum thickness, T, required for the bar. See the little foreshadowing there? The minimum thickness, T. All right. Given, what are, what are my givens? Um, sigma, my normal stress, max, is equal to 70 megapascals. And my shear max is equal to 45 megapascals. Okay? And I know there's a little bit of geometry there. There's a little bit of geometry there in that I have this bar that I'm pulling. And that angle, yeah, that's, it's, actually, it's the same as this angle is 57 degrees. So we should, um, yep. Pulling, there's my figure. That's my figure, although it's really the same as their figure. I didn't gain a whole lot. I didn't gain a whole lot. 400 kilonewtons. All right. There's our problem. Problem statement, there's our givens. All right. What do we know? How do we solve this? How do we attack this? Well, how do I relate my shear, uh, my normal stress and my shear stress to that? Well, from the study guide, I'm sure you got that in front of you. Here's that little section. My normal stress that I'm going to get is equal to the load divided by twice, uh, sorry, twice the area, 2A, times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. Now, I want to be careful about theta. You can see the little figure on the equation sheet. It is there for a very specific reason, and that is because it's confusing, and it can be confusing. On this diagram... There is X, and there is Y, and I want to draw in my normal and my tangential. Here is my normal, and this is the tangential. Now, two things come up. One, if I look at my figure, I, I maybe I could have done this lowercase, but I really don't do a lot of lowercase. Lowercase n for normal, lowercase t for thickness. Oh, no, I mean for tangential. Okay, start being careful. Start being very careful. This is why we can't just know the letters. We've got to know the details. Now, I want to relate what I've got going here to the figure that's on the screen. I'm going to redraw this. X and Y normal tangential and you can see the way that theta is defined is positive that way so this theta is a negative angle that's a negative theta so and this angle from our problem is 57 degrees. So this angle is the angle that we have for theta is equal to negative 33. So let's plug this in. P, my load, is 400 kilonewtons. Divided by twice the area. The area is going to be I'm going to write this over here. Well, I'm not. 
the area is the height times the depth or times the thickness. So that height is 100 millimeters. And then I've got a, a, a thickness, T. Oh, wait, tangential T. You got to keep these things straight. Got to keep them straight. Times 1 plus cosine of negative 66 degrees. Close paren. Need another one there. Phil would have caught that. You would have caught that if I was in the classroom. That has to be equal to the, the, the maximum that this can be is 70 megapascals. Now, we've got a problem here in my units because this is newtons per meter squared, and I've got millimeters here, so I've got to walk my units through carefully. But, but we can do that. We can walk our units through carefully. If I do that, if I walk my units through carefully, what we're going to see is that the thickness... Because that's an equal to, this will be an equal to, and I'm going to get 40.6, oh, sorry, 40.2 millimeters. I'm looking ahead on my sheet. Don't use pen. Don't use pen. See, I would have been able to fix that. All right. I got one other I've got to solve for shear. Shear is equal to, and then that equation was minus P over 2A times sine of 2 theta. The shear stress is equal to negative the load divided by twice the area. It's going to shape up just like that, right? P over 2A, except now it's a sine 2 theta. And when I solve that, I'm going to get this one. The thickness is equal to 40.6 millimeters. That's where I made the mistake. Now, what I like about this problem is we really have a situation where there are two different failure criteria here. There are two different ways that this situation can go bad. It's, it's like a lot of real problems. It's not just a textbook problem. It's a real problem that we need to take into account this could happen or that could happen. And that's what is going on. We could either fail in normal stress or we could fail in our shear stress. And so we came up with answers that said the thickness, if I was going to have 70 megapascals, I need to be, I would be 40.2 millimeters thick. And if I want to keep my stress less than that, then my thickness, because those are opposite, this could be larger. Okay, and then I solved it again. I said, well, but it could also fail in shear. And if it were going to fail in shear, then this. So I need to use, I need to be, it has to be this or bigger or this or bigger. So, so the answer is it needs to be 40.6 millimeters or larger is my answer. And that's why I like this problem. You're going to see that in a number of uh, a number of problems that we get throughout the rest of the semester. Hey, I'm going to put a twisting load on this and a pulling load on this. And how's it going to break? Well, you're going to have to analyze the pulling load and you're going to have to analyze the twisting load. And they're separate. And you're going to have to put them back together and analyze that. And there may be two or three ways that we have to study this stuff. Sorry, didn't mean to have that all covered up. There's our equation. There's our solution. The rest of the semester, we'll have to look at those different ways and analyze them all. One situation, we may have to ask several different questions in order to get the answer. So this is our first exposure to that. There you go. Hope that, other than covering the end, I hope that was pretty good.